27 years ago, this month, maybe really this week, 27 years ago, uh, Steve Jobs returned to Apple. Now, I don't know how many of you know the history of Apple and the history of Steve Jobs, but Steve Jobs, as some of you know, I think, is one of my all-time heroes. Uh, I admire Steve Jobs greatly. I think he's one of the great uh, greatest business heroes in American history. I think his story is incredibly revealing and in, in, in terms of uh, just the kind of human being he was. Uh, I, I view him as a, really a model for great innovation, for great productivity, for being a, a productive genius. And, um, you know, for, and from learning, learning, constantly learning. This is a man who single-handedly, I think, changed the world. There's very little doubt that if Steve Jobs does not join Apple in uh, July of 1997, Apple would have probably gone bankrupt within a couple of years, maybe even less than that. And who knows how long it would have been before we had digital music players, music stores online, never mind iPhones, uh, app stores, iPads, mm, everything else that Apple has brought us. Uh, Apple at the time was in deep, deep financial problems. It had products that most people, except for diehard Apple users like me, just didn't want to use and were not using. While the Newton, the precursor to the iPhone, the Newton was incredibly innovative, uh, it, it was useless and nobody used it. I had a, what do you call it, something pilot. I used a bunch of different, I never, but, but the Newton was just, just not good. It was not a good product. Anyway, Steve Jobs joined in July 1997 after having been fired, fired from Apple um, in 19, when was he fired? 1985. 1985. He had, of course, been a founder of Apple in 1976, uh, had brought in John Scully uh, as its CEO why he brought in somebody from Pepsi-Cola to be the CEO of Apple, I have no idea. Uh, in 1983, and within two years, it was clear that Jobs and Scully did not get along. And given Jobs' attitude in those days and difficulty of, of managing him, and um, he ultimately, he was demoted, and ultimately that led to his leaving the company. He was basically fired. He went on to found a company called Next Computers in 1988. Uh, Next Computers was incredibly innovative. It had a, 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 a innovative and um, amazing operating system. Uh, it also had uh, some incredible software uh, and uh, it had incredible hardware. And they were beautiful, were these black computers. Uh, Next was all black computers. But the company never really did particularly well. They, they were a niche player. Very few people ever bought a Next computer. Uh, and, but, but Apple, you know, Steve Jobs, I think, was, was, uh, was playing with this. And um, uh, he had, uh, he, one of the things the Next had was clearly an innovative, uh, an innovative uh, operating system. At some point uh, in, in the late 1990s, uh, as Apple was struggling and, and deeply struggling, the board of directors of Apple decided to buy Next and have Steve Jobs join the board of Apple. And then in July 1997, uh, basically the board fired the existing CEO of Apple, Emilio, uh, and uh, never really hired Steve Jobs. But Steve Jobs was like responsible for hiring the new CEO, was kind of dabbling at running Apple, was kind of there on a day-to-day -day basis. And two years later, I think he became the interim CEO, and then finally he was out, out CEO. But the reality is that from July 1987, Steve Jobs was the CEO of Apple. And from here started one of the most amazing stories in all of the history of corporate America. While the founding of Apple was pretty amazing, 
uh, well, the innovation in the original Apple, and then, of course, particularly in the Macintosh, was pretty amazing and important and changed the computer industry. That was nothing as compared to Steve Jobs' second round at Apple. So you can think of Steve Jobs as somebody who had innovated and started a company and made a lot of money, and, and, but ultimately, was, ultimately failed. He was fired and learned from that failure and improved and got better in every, in every dimension of, I think, his business life. Jobs got better. And when he came back, which is what? Uh, he came back, I was fighting in 85, uh, 86. He was fighting in 85 and, uh, and then came back in, uh, in uh, 97. So came back 12 years later. I mean, just think about what happened then. It, it, you know, uh, uh, it, it was a company that was on the brink of collapse required $150 million investment from Microsoft, the enemy, the enemy. And, you know, became the most innovative company in the world and it became the largest company in the world by a long shot. And today, depending on the day, still is the largest company in the world. Interestingly enough, so is Microsoft on any given day. So both companies have done phenomenally well. But Apple was literally on the verge of bankruptcy. And the ability of Steve Jobs to turn this company around, to, to, to make it what it is today, to build it, to reverse the trends, is you know, truly mind-boggling. Uh, and, and, you know, I think inspires, I think, uh, and should inspire uh, admiration and, uh, and a huge amount of respect. This is one of the all-time great business leaders uh, in, uh, in, American, uh, in American history. Um, yep. Okay, so uh, yeah, I mean this is this is a, this is a story Jobs told about his return to Apple. He says, "When I was trying to decide whether to come back to Apple or not, I struggled. I talked to a lot of people and got a lot of opinions." This is in an interview in 2001, and then there I was, late one night, struggling with this, and I called up a friend of mine at 2 a.m. <laughs> I said, "I should go back." Should I not? And the Fed replied, Steve, look, I don't give an F about Apple. Just make up your mind. And he hung up. <laughs> it was at that moment that I realized I truly cared about Apple. And as a consequence, he went back. Uh, he went back first, as, as we said, uh, first onto the board uh, and uh, and then uh, became uh, became the CEO and uh, basically replaced G Gil Emilio, who had been the CEO of National Semiconductor uh, before that. So um, that is uh, the story, the legacy. Of course, I think everybody knows uh, and and the, the the overwhelming success. Not every product was great. Not every product was a success. But again. It, it, you still, you still, it's still hard to find an example of, you know, a, a company like Apple going from riches to rags to unbelievable riches like that. Uh, and much of it dr driven by one CEO, by one individual, by his vision, his tenacity, and his skill at hiring and surrounding people with exceptional people, including, uh, including the, his, his uh, Tim, Tim Cook, his replacement, uh, and surrounding him with ex himself and hiring exceptional people and then having the vision to drive a company and, and to the success it has and, and pushing, pushing and pushing on innovation and on, uh, you know, just, just changing the world, changing the industry in dramatic ways. So I salute Steve Jobs in commemoration of his coming back uh, to Apple. Um, on this date... 
was it 27 years ago. 